Uh, my name is Nicholas Wood. I'm the Golden Professor of Genetics at the UCL Institute of Neurology in London. So over the last 15, 18 years, there's been a huge uh, progress in our understanding of the genetic base of Parkinson's disease. This is driven uh, initially uh, by discoveries in Mendelian forms of Parkinson's disease. On this slide is a brief schematic of the major genes that have been found in the last uh, decade or so. There are other genes still to be found for sure, but there are emerging pathways as can be briefly highlighted from this slide based around the mitochondria with PINK1, FBX07, Parkin and probably DJ1. The lysosomal pathways in the top right hand corner by ATP13, A2, GBA, PANK2 and PLAD2, G6 and then something to do with protein folding with alpha-synuclein tau precise role of LARC2 as a kinase uh, still remains to be elucidated. Nevertheless, um, I think we can hold out some hope for the future that the pathways to Parkinson's disease are not infinite and rather constrained around these principal pathways. My talk is based on genetic pathways in Parkinson's disease and I want to illustrate this for the sake of this meeting with the genes involved in uh, Parkinson's disease, namely PINK1, FBX7 and Parkin. Uh, a lot of the talks from the meeting will highlight the molecular biology that have been driven by findings uh, in these autosomal recessive inherited condition. In to on top of the uh, findings in Mendelian Parkinson's disease, uh, huge progress in the last four to five years has been made in understanding the genetic architecture in common forms of Parkinson's disease. This is a slide just taken from the most recent, very large-scale paper uh, in genome-wide association studies in Parkinson's disease. This is a very large international group publishing a couple of months ago in uh, using over almost 13,500 cases and over 82,500 controls, a very large sample size. And as you can see from this Manhattan plot, um, the dots in red or orange are the ones that pass genome-wide significance, and these have been replicated. And as you can see, a very significant number, numbering in the early 20s now, of Parkinson's loci have been found. What is, what is to be remembered here is that although, uh, as on this slide, the, the loci have been given gene names, such as alpha nucleon log 2 and so forth, often it's the case that we do not know the precise gene that underlies these, these associated intervals. And so one has to bear this in mind that there's still quite a lot of genetic work to be done to really elucidate this further. Of course, the driver for doing all this genetic discovery is to understand the pathways that lead to Parkinson's disease. Shown on this slide is a very uh, crude uh, schematic of how things uh, might apply. So a few years ago, we perhaps knew a small number of molecules, two, three, four, that g gave rise to Parkinson's disease. And over the last five to ten years, that has become a more complex pathway as shown in the large pyramid on the left-hand side of this slide. There's still a lot of work to be done, um, but it's very in exciting to see the discoveries that are coming out of the pink Parkin pathway and the role they play in quality control of the mitochondria, and one can now see really quite a complex pathway emerging in this regard. This allows us to model Parkinson's disease much more accurately, both in cell and other uh, animal models, but where a lot of us are headed is trying to use the human as the animal model and to discover the molecular processes in human cohorts. My own uh, personal belief here is that we will need to define the people who are at risk of Parkinson's disease and follow those patients um, and study them in depth with a range of techniques, including imaging and perhaps other uh, biological markers. And the way we'll define those at-risk individuals is genetically. And so we'll build cohorts of patients who carry abnormalities, let's say, in the pink or Parkinson pathway, which will then be available for molecular um, investigation with likely target molecules in an experimental neurology framework. So, <clears throat> in summary, there's a lot of progress has been made in Parkinson's disease. We now know um, quite a large number of molecules and some of the downstream pathways, but there's a huge amount to be done before we can really get some accurate target validation uh, for drug intervention. Thank you.